Okay, so a very good afternoon to all the participants. So we are going to start uh, session three. The topic uh, of the session is reversible computing. So the resource person for this session is Dr. Gunajit Kolita. So he is already with us. Uh, so let me take the privilege to introduce Dr. Kolita to the participants. So Dr. Kolita is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Assam Engineering College, which is a pioneer college of engineering in Northeast India. So a computer engineer, uh, he is basically a computer engineer with a BTEC degree in computer science and engineering from Nerist, Nerzuli. So he obtained uh, MTech in computer science and engineering from the prestigious IIT Kharagpur. He has obtained doctorate degree in engineering from Guwahati University, and he has been with academics for more than a decade. Prior to that, he was also with the government PSU for a short period of time. He is a member of IEEE, ACM USA, and uh, ACM India. So his research interest is on futuristic uh, computing, including quantum computing and artificial intelligence. So I now request uh, Dr. Kolita to deliver his talk. Thank you, uh, Manas sir. Yeah, please. So uh, today we'll talk on reversible computing. Maybe many of you are um, quite familiar with this or some of uh, you may not. Uh, so, I'm taking that uh, few people are new to this. Uh, maybe some are very expert or like that. I'm also a student of this uh, area. Uh, so uh, let us try to learn something. So I'm not actually in, uh, an expert in this field, but a learner, a student. So let us start. So uh, uh, so this topic is reversible computing as um, already Manus has said. So let us see. So in the introduction, uh, we need to know the concept of reversibility. So, uh, a reversibility um, actually uh, when some uh, input is given to a system and that system will generate some outputs. Now, if we somehow can uh, use those outputs to create the inputs, so that is the idea of reversibility. Um, difference between is reversibility and reversibility if we to look into. And then what we find in a irreversible system, uh, if you have some set of inputs, uh, you will, again, you are giving that input to a system, irreversible system. So that will generate outputs. Now we just can't uh, compute or get back the output from this input. Uh, the system currently we are using are irre irreversible in nature. Uh, for example, you can say, uh, let me write over the slides. Say, uh, very simple uh, logic gate if we consider, let us say, an OR gate. We have two input A and B, and output is, say, Y. Now, what will happen? If this is a system for us, two inputs A and B, and inside a black, bo black box, it may be an OR gate, let us say, and there is only one output. And this output may be zero or one, depending on the input A and B. The question is, at a time, only we'll find either zero or one, but our input will be always two in this situation. 
if it is two input or again let us say so then uh, what about the other output so actually we are losing that uh, uh sorry what about the other input so we are losing that input basically and from this uh, zero or one whatever we uh, receive that output line y it is difficult for us to get a and b we can get it definitely using some augmented circuit over there so uh, that is a problem in irreversible system and basically a reversible system um so try to look into this aspect and uh, try to mitigate this uh, concept of problem so it is all actually lots of um, um, many of the problems are reversible but the system we know um or we are using are irreversible and a very hot topic or um, very attractive topic now it is people are discussing is what that quantum computing so we uh, perhaps you got an idea about quantum computing if uh, i i hope if not maybe in the next few classes you'll get the idea so uh, it is said that inherently your quantum uh, computation or quantum computing is reversible now uh, what is that that we will definitely see in the later uh, in the later uh, slides about that reversibility so basically difference between irreversibility and reversibility is that so, uh, in case of a reversible system from output side without using some other circuitry or mechanism you can get back the input in irreversible system that is not possible it may be possible once you use some other resources like other circuits or something like that so uh, that is basically the difference and moreover there are other difference too uh, uh, because if you simply see this if we design a circuit using this uh, orthodox or Uh, classical electronics so we'll find lots of inputs and then we'll get some let us say maybe a single output so these all inputs will uh, compute and get out i mean help us to get the output but what will happen you have lots of inputs these inputs actually do helping uh, to get the output but they are dying dying means they are actually releasing energy and that energy is in terms of heat so this i uh, actually uh, um, the phenomenon was first um uh, i mean investigated or first come into the mind of uh, one person that is rof lendu he is from uh, bennett uh, sorry he uh, he is from ibm another scientist charles bennett he is also from ibm these people first lendu actually these people uh, try to see Uh, about this so uh, this is a uh, in 70s this uh, this things were investigated so from 70s onwards they are trying to do something on this and there are uh, mm -hmm. lots of works by landu bennett and many people uh, on this and today we actually got um, the actual quantum computer from ibm again so these people were Uh, actually the um, what to say pioneer in this field you can say it. now property of reversible logic a reversible logic is an input and an input and an output function so in reversible case it is an input one output but in case of if it is your let me again see if it is your irreversible you can say it will be b to the power n what so this function will be your irreversible in nature but in case of reversible function will be like this all right we have set of inputs b n and that will produce set of output 
those outputs are basically in the form of the input may be not in a proper order they will be in a different order so uh, this basically we say a mapping so this particular function uh, need to satisfy this mapping uh, which will be one to one all right so this thing that is and on to mapping no duplication so this is very important property of reversible logic apart from this uh fan in and fan out are not allowed or permitted in case of reversible circuit if you desire uh which is uh, possible in case of classical electronic but if it is a reversible design these are not allowed main reason is the distribution of power actually uh help to help us to lose the information that is the idea so we don't want to lose the information so example of reversible function if you see it's like this say we have set of input x 0 1 2 3 4 5 like that say so if we apply a reversible function f on this input the fx then it will generate some output y like this is 0 3 6 5 4 1 so suppose it's an abstract example so now if we see zero present over here in its proper location uh, similarly two if you see it is in a different position so three is in this position like this way if you notice all the inputs 0 to 6 are available in the output side but in a different location so with this y if we use if we apply let us say f of y we'll get again x so that if some function behave like this or capable to do this we say that function is reversible all right so these are actually uh one to one mapping and the reverse is your one to mapping so uh, this two uh, and then need to be satisfied now importance of reversibility <coughs> uh, why uh, the reversible is so good or so um, an attractive topic idea is that the heat dissipation is almost zero in this case people used to say but it 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 need to be a very ideal situation uh, and power consumption particularly must be low but people are designing the quantum computer now it is actually in the beginning they require lots of power so as per um, is not proper way of implementing <coughs> quantum computer but since we are in a uh, starting stage maybe uh, in time come to prove this that near to zero heat dissipation also possible i mean uh, or uh, less power requirement will also help again one importance of uh, reversibility is what again absence of feedback so we know in the circuit if feedback is there it required extra um, or augmented form of resources not only in the physical also in terms of power and other so that is not required so ultimately it will make it efficient uh, less power con consumption less delay <coughs> and uh, maybe of low price you can say this uh, reversible concept is also helpful for designing parallel system so we'll see why, uh, how this is possible later we'll see that so it's a uh, help uh, to achieve the parallelism again we understand uh, this is the term we know and this particular mvp is on, on quantum computing so primary char characteristic of quantum computing is the reversibility so that's why there is a some of the importance of your uh, reversibility next let us see quantum computing so we'll uh, 
definitely discussed in the sessions about quantum computing, different way of representing them, that is, it, all the things. But here, just I'm mentioning the things in a very deep way. So, uh, quantum computer table works with uh, particles that can be in superposition. Superposition, you can say, uh, what you say, uh, in the form of stack, in one direction, if you see it, uh, you'll see either you are looking at zero or one. So, if you are looking at one, maybe zero is behind this. But from other direction, if we consider a three dimension space, other direction, it is zero is also visible. All right. So from that side, zero, um, zero is superposition over one, and from other side, opposite direction, one is superposition over zero. So and this means in quantum computing or quantum uh, computer, both these states may reside together, and uh, how we'll find it? It depend on the uh, probability or state vector, you can say. So, rather than representing the bits, this particle uh, represents the key bit. Right? So, how to represent them? It's, um, we have some notation, we say bearing notation like this. So, zero can be represented like this, one can be represented like this. Right? Same way. So, these are known as qubit. Right? So here, if we say uh, if we say it's a zero qubit, so here both the zero and one, right, we can uh, there is a possibility of getting zero and one. In case of the qubit one, there is a possibility of getting uh, both zero and one. So both the bits actually reside together. You can say. So it's a ten here, which can take on the value zero and both simultaneously. So about this, we'll. Uh, discuss elaborately later. Now, in case of a reversible uh, computing, what you'll see, it is uh, what we are supposed to discuss is not quantum computing. We will try to utilize the classical electronics to do so. And that may be helpful because um, if we use some simulator or available tools in quantum computer, you will see. Uh, after designing the circuit, they at the end measure it. And when they measure it, they use the classical computer's help. And the main reason is uh, there is actually an, uh, not a very concrete or foolproof instruction set architecture available for quantum computer. So, what they are doing. Um, the classical things, the classical things um, uh, we normally perform, all right. So that we simulate and try to represent in a particular format so that quantum computer understand. And we can, uh, we, if we want, we can simulate over the classical uh, computer. Or if some company like IBM allow you, you can transport this program to their actual device. And you get back the result. So that is possible. So here we'll discuss the reversibility on the basis of classical computing. Uh, <clears throat> so in case of um, your reversible computing, some performance parameters are important. And these parameters, if you see, uh, there may be other parameters as well. Here we have mentioned these are widely used by people. Quantum cost, number of gates, um, number of uh, bodies, number of ancillary inputs, like that. So, uh, some hardware complexity kind of performance parameter also used. But very important one is your quantum cost. And garbage output, also ancillary. These three are important. Head count may not be that much important. Uh, but yes, uh, your if your number of gate is less, then of course it will be better in terms of cost and other. But these three are very important. Uh, what is that quantum cost? Because as we understand, um, we want to achieve reversibility, 
and uh, right now we think there is no quantum kind of thing so the behavior of that reversibility uh, we can design using classical uh, electronics but ultimately they they are uh, they will come with the problems that classical electronics uh, actually facing so uh, what we will do we will try to design this thing so that it can be later on map back to quantum and that's why quantum force is important features for that so it is basically what uh, how we calculate quantum cost because the circuit will design will be on the basis of classical electronics so for that actually we require some sort of algorithm or maybe some library distribution some external or third party kind of things so here um, uh, one uh, lots of i mean libraries are there so one of uh, the very important library is known as ncb library uh, there may be other library as well mm, your clifford clifford this library is there toffoli clifford this um uh, right lots of other libraries possible anyway so ncb library uh, will use here um, whatever example we are discussing here will be the basis of ncb get library meaning is when we design a circuit using classical electronics so that we try to um, convert to a quantum circuit and there using this library will we we place some elementary gates these are the quantum gates so meaning is you have a reversible circuit representing your classical boolean information i mean boolean uh, method that will map to another circuit which is also reversible and here we will place quantum gates so that this circuit behave exactly same way the other circuit we have designed so that's why how many such gates in that library uh, sorry how many gates are required to design this mapping is giving us the quantum cost so uh, in ncb library normally three gates um, so four gate one is uh, not gate is there not gate will be there next uh, one is v plus gate v gate this control v and control v plus gate and and there is your c not gate okay. this is there in ncb gate library so you can see n c and this two are control v gate one is v plus another is v So N C B, maybe that's why N C B. So <clears throat> uh, another count, uh, another uh, parameter is gate count that we know number of gates used. So that is not a very um, good parameter. Anyway, next next is your Gurgis count. Is basically since your uh, as per the reversible function definition, number of input must be equal to number of output in your circuits or in your gate. Then it may happen if we give number of input some of the output may not be required for us we are uh, computing suppose we are comparing two bit using a reversible circuit so if you are uh, comparing two bit using a reversible circuit maybe circuit input 10 and we understand output side we required only whether they are equal greater or smaller So three output, but rest seven output are not important for a particular a problem like this. So then we say they are unused output, and we say they are garbage. So number of such uh, I mean output which are unused are known as garbage count. So now question is um uh, why so? If we judiciously try to uh, use those output, then we can make a garbage free circuit, and that is desirable. but again i am telling you since you are designing a particular problem then it is it is not always possible to use all the output so uh, it's required a proper synthesis a good algorithm a good 
synthesis algorithm for that. But again, for every problem, it is not possible. That's why Garbage's um, output will be always there. But we always expect the circuit must be garbage free. There is no garbage, or garbage count will be zero. All the output will be utilized. Anyway, so we expect that garbage count will be less. Next, another is known as Ancilia count, which is basically what? So when we want to, uh, again, that property, reversible property, number of input must be equal to number of output. So sometimes to augment the circuits or to keep the nature of the circuit reversible, we need to add extra lines to the circuit. Maybe you are using a gate and then an extra light uh, line is required. Most of the time, when we want to copy a bit, copy a bit, right? Since there is no fan out system, so we want to copy a bit. In case of fan out system, we can directly link a, a link a connection over there. But here it is not possible. So what we will do? We need to copy that bit. So once you copy that bit, you require an extra line or a constant line. So this is known as NCL. And we here also we want to reduce that count. So we want to make this number less if possible. But again, it's depend on the problem. If our problem demand uh, that the copying of the information or some other requirement, then there is a possibility that there will be NCLA input. We have to add then line, extra line. That extra line is known as NCLA line and number of such line will be your NCLA count. So these are basically some parameters. Apart from this, another uh, characteristic people used to follow is hardware complexity. So hardware complexity is basically what the different kind of Boolean operation you perform over the circuit, a total number of such uh, operation will be your hardware complexity. Uh, particularly operation like um, AND operation or maybe XOR operation, this type of operation normally considered are uh, the total such operation are also known as hardware complexity. So that I have not mentioned here, but many people used to consider that as a performance parameter. So these are a few performance parameters in a reversible computing. So example of reversible gate and function. So we understand uh, a reversible function if we want to implement physically, so we require a gate. Meaning is a gate implements a function basically. And in case of a reversible, it, it will be reversible function. So it is one famous gate known as Perry's gate. If you see A, B, C are input, and on the side, if you see, it will be A in the first, means directly whatever input is there, that output will come out on the output side. Uh, and second one is B, output will be A, X, or B, and like that, third one will be A, B, X, or C. So here are some Boolean operations basically, in, uh, the way in classical electronics, all right? And this can be achieved in quantum, uh, so that's why we need to um, I mean, map this circuit to a quantum circuit. So that requires some sort of quantum gate, because here the gates will be your Boolean gates. So if you see this input A, B, C, if you see the permutation you know, with the output, you'll find uh, due to this XOR operation and this A, B, N and XOR operation with C, you'll see there will be some permutation of this uh, A, B, C. But if you notice the uh, table, output side, all inputs will be available there. They are, they are not dying down, they are available, right? Uh, again, question is whether this is a strict tool this is a strict rule, strict rule fine. But again, uh, what we say in practical situation, when we design again some circuit, we, uh, we're telling that some of the uh, outputs are not required because we are using uh, implementing a particular function. Then there, and then there is a possibility they are not maintaining the reversibility. Because garbage, garbage may be anything. So yes, that is, but your function need to follow that precise, right? So uh, <clears throat> now, uh, what we we'll see, if you if you notice this gate, A, B, C, C input, 
now we initialize this c input as zero because we have a motive here what motive we want to design something let us say using this get we want to design a half header so it may not be possible always but uh, for this particular get it is possible say so then what we will do we understand half header sum will be here all right and we required a carry though it is not part of the exact sum but a carry is required and a carry is basically your a b why because when you add one and one zero one will be carry so then if you perform an end operation between a b this will be high on uh, in this situation this will be high on so to do this this c input must be in a slice to zero right if you make it zero your output line will be this now see this is our sum this may be the carry right and this is directly coming so this is not useful for this particular design so we say this is a garbage and to manage this i mean uh, particular function that half header function or half header application we need to make it zero so this is constant input the constant input is also ancillary input you can say this is also ancillary if we sometimes add extra lines to this system that is also ancillary and this is constant line this is also ancillary okay. so this is one example now this for this particular gate we need to uh, go for that performance parameter so then what this particular i mean for this particular we require that table and we have some rule over that ncd library how to convert this circuit to a quantum circuit there are some rules so these rules we need to follow once we follow that rule basically we are using a control v gate that is v plus and v gate and one c not gate this is known as c not gate if you see this this is same. these are all quantum gates and these are known as elementary quantum gate elementary meaning is their quantum cost is one unit their qc is always one that's why they are known as elementary quantum gate if you can design some gate with quantum cost one then your gate also will be elementary all right so this is a c not very famous gate this is also known as feynman gate so this uh, uh, this is this particular gate it will behave like this If I give here A and this is B, it will be A. This will be A as well. So this particular gate actually behaves like this, all right? And other two gate, if you see, the V plus and V gate, their behavior is a little bit different. How they behave? Suppose this is my V gate. Okay. And B. So this A will directly come. In case of this, what will say? If A is true, then we'll keep B. Otherwise, it will be your function over that. Uh, whatever function is applied, the B that is. So meaning is, if it is true. Then uh, sorry, if it is true, then not B. The function of B will be applicable. If it is false, directly B will be. There. Output will be B if it is false. It means if B this is zero, it will be directly B. If it is one, that function applied on this. So what is that function? So that is basically depicted in that ANSI library, and uh, we require that truth table for that. Um, so that's why it actually these are good for small circuit bigger circuit actually we require some synthesis uh, synthesis uh, form or synthesis kind of algorithm or maybe tools should be helpful anyway so here that particular circuit to consider we will see 1 2 3 2 so v plus gate and 1 v gate so c control v gate that is and 1 c not so total 1 2 3 4 Four gates are required, and if you see one lines are drawn over here, is basically what 
if you see this line this is independent all right and this is also independent definitely it's its output is input to this it's okay here also it is like this so they are almost independent so that's why when you draw the line the depth of every uh, gate if you see here one at one so this is one two three four so we are using four elementary gates over here so the quantum cost of this will be four that's why a gate count one two three four in this case so quantum gate is four in this case what will be garbage count for this particular this is an is so this will be the garbage one garbage and the one and this is a constant line to maintain our function whatever we are designing we require to make it constant so that is the difference of the one all right these are the parameter and you see this parameter is not that much important because at this moment it is reflecting the change anyway ah uh, but yes uh, sometime and uh, this get count may be different because we have some template uh, i mean simplification rule then it will be different anyway now there are lots of uh, reversible gates available uh, same two input and two output gates that one gate we have discussed is Feynman gate or Sinod gate that is like this already we have discussed like this three input three output gates many people uh, I mean, develop this type of gates these are very famous gate the fully pair is already at this point discussed another is Pekin gate R gate PR gate there's lots of gates lots of thousands thousands of gates All right, and particularly others are not directly in quantum gate, but you can uh, derive quantum circuit out of that. Then they become quantum. But these two gates are quantum, quantum gate, Feynman gate, and the Toffoli gate. Very widely used. Toffoli. There is another library also known as Toffoli library. Toffoli Clifford library is there. So. <clears throat> Uh, these two are. Uh, if you notice this operation, you see A, B, C. So if you see the change is only in the third. Now how it change? It is controlled by that C. So these are actually what? Sorry, it is controlled by A and B. So that's why what we say, these are control lines and C is basically the target line, right? So once you try to see the output, you will notice. All the inputs are available over the line, right? Because most of the time they are. Uh, if you notice this, when it will differ, one value of AB will will will, will get changed, right? Uh, because these two are always same, right? It is like zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero If you see this one, if you see this in the third uh, here, all everything similar, all these things are similar. Over here, A and B are exactly same. Third one, if you see A B or XOR C, A B XOR C, so this will be zero, this will be one, this will be zero. This will be one. I'm writing over here. You see, at zero, one, zero, one. So uh, this is zero, and this is one. So one. This is your zero. So this will be zero. And this will be your one. Up to this, it's like this. Now here, this will be one. And this will be zero. In a there will be tip, a tip of bits in the last two inputs of two inputs that is AB. All right. So there it will get changed. The rest will be same. Whatever is there, it will be. The last two bits will be different due to this, due to this age. So this is also one uh, quantum gate. Of course, they are not elementary quantum gate because elementary quantum gate. To be elementary quantum gate, it, uh, 
cost must be one. So this is uh, Feynman gate is elementary quantum gate, but Toffoli gate is not. It has a complete, I mean, quantum cost of five. Anyway, a similar way, uh, there may be four input and four output gate, uh, or many other gate like that. This is one example, ESG gate. Lots of gates are available as I told you. So if you notice this gate's four input, four output functions are like this. First output will be same, second will be like this, and so on. Okay. Now, why reversible computing? So reversible logic is uh, helpful in designing low power circuit. Uh, next, the uh, loss of of a bit, particularly um, bit is basically information. So in irreversible case, loss of bit actually produces a small amount of bit that is k t log two joule. That amount of bit is generated for one bit information. So, loss of energy uh, may be avoided if we introduce reversible logic in the design. So, that's why we need uh, reversible computing. And this amount of heat generation is there in case of irreversible circuit. Of course, if we design the reversible circuit, also still it will be there. But again, that heat generation will be a little bit less. If you perform heat analysis, uh, power consumption, or, uh, or so, We'll see there that the amount of heat will be a bit less if you design uh, that circuit using reversible concept. But in case of quantum, we expect that heat generation will be near zero. So there are lots of gates reported. Many people have given, uh, and many improved gates are given, less quantum for functionality, lots of functions like that. But um, as per that logic, because it's a Boolean logic again, as per logic, there are, if we consider three, in, three input and three output gates, there will be um, two to the power three, uh, and factorial to the power three amount of gate available. That is uh, eight factorial. So you can have eight factorial. So similarly, if it is four cross four, then uh, two to the power Four factorial number of four input gate possible, and that's why all of them are still not explored because it's a huge number. Still, lots of uh, I mean, this uh, tools basically uh, all gates are not equally good, but they may be for certain application they are useful. So people are doing that. So. Uh, particularly for specific operation normally, uh, they are helpful that's why people are designing or introducing them. Uh, again, if we notice, you can see um, low cost circuit like decoder, all right, may, it's very tough to design. That means you can design no doubt, but it may not be efficient. So this is, there, there is a challenge over there. So people are trying for better, I mean, better design. Next, um, uh, if you want to design a significant logic in it based on reversible, then also um, we require optimized circuit. All right, we require cost-efficient circuit. So that is, that's why we need to study it. Uh, we want to explore this again. Uh, Logic since the uh, reversible logic preserve input and output, so it will be beneficial for cryptogra cryptographic application. So that is one aspect. For signal processing as well, it will be um, beneficial. So we don't want to lose information. Some gates like this. So here also if you see this, here if you see the tables, all these uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, all these inputs, and if you see the output, we are mapping directly. The one is mapping over here, two is mapping over here, three is 
मैपिंग है फोर इज मैपिंग यस फोर इज डायरेक्टली ओवर हियर फाइव इज फाइव इज मैपिंग हियर राइट सिक्स इज मैपिंग डायरेक्टली एंड सेवन इज मैपिंग ओवर हियर so meaning is all inputs are available over output so it's a reversible so this function uh, this it will implement this function so ultimately this is a reversible bit and if we try to uh, i mean convert this to a quantum circuit then using an cv gate library then it will be like this it required one uh, one control v gate to uh, two control v gate one in plus gate and and then of not get so that's complexity or quantum complexity of this gate will be four because we require four elementary quantum similarly we may have lots of gates like this so again if you see this gate all the inputs are available over the output maybe in a different order or different location but they are there they are not dying down in case of um, classical electronics they will definitely die down because we get a single output so this is another uh, similarly uh, another one is like this so we get lots of um, depending on your need suppose if you see particularly this one if you see this gate maybe we, this will be a, a helpful for designing other circuit for other circuit it will be helpful so why may not be good error but may be helpful why because we have an other other operation over here and there a carry the sum and carry all right and the bit that we are not utilizing will be a so we will make it ncb meaning we make it 0 or 1 whatever let us see we make it 1 if we make it 1 then this become 0 and it will be dc that is carry and this will be our sum meaning this will be our input bit this is our constant one ncb that is So maybe this gate will help you for designing half header as well as the full header. Similarly, if we uh, look into this gate, depending on our need, maybe this will be helpful for designing one uh, multiplexer. Because we understand in case of multiplexer, out of many input, we we'll choose one. Right? We we'll choose one at time, and that will be controlled by two, um, controlled by some input again. Or control line, a select line, you can say. In this case, if you see here, our input may be B and C, and if you see in the in one, I mean, uh, situation or state, it will be A B, so it is A, and another state will be inverse of A. So meaning is this A can be utilized as a control bit, and B and C will be our input bit. So thus, it will be a multiplexer gate also. All right. This two input B and C, and this is a control. And these two are not useful in that case because we are using what we are utilizing the multiplexer function. So thus, these two will be garbage for us. Okay, but input there there won't be any ancillary. Garbage will be this, and this is our output. All right. So depending on the value of A, we will either get B or C. So thus, you will design your gate depending on uh, the need or what you want to do. Similarly, it is uh, like this. Another one, maybe again another one. All right. The only thing is that propriety need to be maintained. It doesn't mean you write three lines over here and some fun uh, functionality over output side and uh, same number of input and same number of outputs and things become reversible. No, this is not possible. It's uh, you need to be uh, do this with this judiciously. All right. Not always. Also, this is another example here. Also, this can be utilized as your header and multiplexer. If you see this here, this is your half header operation that sum, and this will be your scale, whatever you say. And the C value, if you make one, this becomes zero. That this will be the sum, and this will be the half scale, and this becomes. And this will not be utilized, so this becomes a garbage. So in this uh, circuit, we have one ancillary line and one garbage line. Next, this circuit also can be utilized as multiplexer. So, in this case, if you see 
here C and C bar. So meaning is C will be in this case C will be the control bit, and A and B will be the input. A and B the input, and C will be the control line. So this is our output now, and this will be not utilized, so they are going. So thus various operation can be performed. And moreover, if you notice what the whether this gate can perform as a Uh, and get yes, this gate can perform an and get. If you make C one, A B will be there, so this is an and operation, and A X or B is there, so this is an X or operation. All right. Whether this gate can perform as not get yes, why? You make just any A or B zero, then what? It becomes C bar, so it is a not get, right? Or if you make A is one, it becomes B bar. The one X or B means B bar, so the B is not. Or you make B is one. Become a x or one to the a bar like that. Not operation is possible. Your x or operation is possible. End operation is possible. All right. Uh, also, um, uh, no, that is not possible. So like that. And copy operation is copy means the day in detail come out directly. So that uh, suppose here a, if you see, if I make c is zero. Uh, if I make C is uh, C zero, not C is one. Suppose then this part become zero and this become A. Meaning in, in this output we have copied A. So that copy operation is also possible or transfer operation. So thus various uh, boolean operation is also possible. The classical boolean. Next is uh, uh, one block diagram of this. Yes, so if you see the function, it will be like this. And if we convert this to quantum representation, it will be like this. Now we see here what will happen. Say here, this is a Feynman or C not gate, and this is one control V gate. It practically V plus gate. We say it's a control V gate. So now this two, if you notice here, this particular input is depend on this output, and this gate is. I mean, change the state depending on this value. All right. Meaning is both these gates are form one block, and this is sort of entanglement. The word very widely used in case of uh, quantum computing. So this will form an entanglement. So if it is an entanglement, they are dependent. So complexity of this will be one. Though we are using two, but its complexity is one because they are dependent on each other. Complement each other, so entanglement. So that we can compute this complexity. Uh, the rough complexity will be four again, one, two, three, four. But since they are in the form of entanglement, we can say this complexity will be one, two, and three, right? So like this, this is also possible. So this is another way to do so. Uh, this is another from here also the same thing. Uh, if you try to implement this particular function, you see they are almost similar. This function and a b c bar, this function are similar. Similarly, this and this function are similar. That's why if you if you see the similarity in this, so here also form of entanglement. So we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven actually elementary gates are there. That is a raw. Um, I mean. Performance, computational performance parameter value, but since they are, I mean, entanglement, so uh, one, two, so this will be working as an unit, so or um, unitary format, so it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it is not eleven, then seven. You can consider this to be seven. So uh, that is a normal, your. Classical representation, all right, and this will be your quantum representation of that this particular gate. Uh, similarly, some scalable form of form also possible. Scalable in the sense, if we increase the number of input uh, output side, uh, whatever I mean functionality is there, the way we increase output also behaves same way, all right. So meaning is it will be n to n scalable reversible gate. So this is also possible. So this is our n to n scalable gate. 
so if we make only four input because it is a1 to an out of this four four will behave like this way four will behave like this way. Uh, again if we make it three it will be ultimately your um, Perez get kind of, uh, Fredkin get kind of thing, right? Like that, uh, lots of gates can be devised out of this, right? But the property, if you see, a input output will be a one. In case of second output, if you see, a I mean XOR operation between the previous uh, the parent input and the previous one, this is followed. And the last will be the last particular that uh, output, if you see, and the operation of all the input previous input and exit the current input like this here if you see current is the b and a b c all the previous input so this is one uh, i mean scalable form of gate because you can this gate can be scaled down to i mean scale up to five six seven eight up to m or maybe scale down to three two and so on if, if you scale down this to two it will be your Find many gates. Anyway, so similar other form of uh, I mean uh, reversible scalable gates are possible. This is another example. Next is your reversible arithmetic and logic. So we understand in arithmetic and logic unit we required one arithmetic circuit, and uh, since it is your reversible, so that uh, logic must be reversible. And there will be um, we are designing this reversible um, arithmetic and logic circuit, meaning it will require reversible gate, and our circuit also will be reversible in this case. So components of uh, basic arithmetic and logic units are particularly multiplexer. One arithmetic circuit. Most of the time they are some adder and logic circuits. And maybe other circuits will be dear to enhance your performance of all it. But particularly multiplexer, arithmetic circuit, and logic circuit. And we say multiplexer and adder basically, and some gates. So these three are very important component: multiplexer, adder, and some logic gate. These are very important to design a basic arithmetic and logic unit. But if you want to make it better or efficient, allow with lots of operation, maybe other circuits like decoder, comparator, or many things like that, divisor, putting, putting, lots of circuits will be added. For the simple, we require only multiplexer, adder, and some gates. Say already uh, we have shown some. You see uh, previous slide there. A gate can be utilized as half header or full header. Suppose this is a one gate where this is uh, this gate is made first bit as ancilia zero raised by AB suppose. So here we we'll get our sum and here this carry. Now if we combine this. Two gates together, we will get here the sum. Why? Because here we get A B XOR. So for full header, we require that input carry to be XOR. In in this case, our input carry is suppose C. So this need to be XOR. So what the first? If you see here, uh, this is C. All right. So here A XOR B is already there. That is our first, um, I mean, output. So this is basically A XOR B because as per this, it is A XOR B. All right. Now A B A is this B is C. So that's why this sum will be A XOR B XOR C. So this is our sum. Next, what is carry? Carry will be A B. All right, A B means A is what A X R B, so A X R B. All right, and what is B? 
A X R B is this C basically. Sorry, A is your basically what A X R B. A that is X R B is basically C, so it is C. All right. So this can be utilized as. Okay. Anyway, better design may be possible or better way. I mean, this can be utilized. So, like that way, if we consider one structure like this, get structure like this. Here, this can be utilized as if you see this is a sum of these two. There it may be input and this is two uh, input and this is input carry. So, this is our sum, and if we see here. Uh, this particular output can be utilized as carry. So for this, we need to make this ancilla constant into the zero. So it is an ancilla. So it becomes zero. So it will be exactly a. All right. Meaning is in this case, a will be our input carry. This is a will be input carry, and b and c will be our actual input. Two bit. And here we'll get the sum. Here we'll get the uh, sorry. Here we'll get the sum. Here we'll get the carry. So it will act as a full adder. Next, we can make it two subsectors. So this will be subsection subsection result we know. And this time what we'll do? We'll create again b zero. All right. And this will behave as subsection. So that's same. I mean block can be utilized as. So this will block or gate can be placed as uh, adder and subset. You can design your own and you can uh, implement the function or whatever you want to do. All right. So this particular thing can be designed this way. Become uh, your full adder this way. Mm, actually, the diagrams are. You can use half a day. It's actually not half a day. Full header. Okay. So that I already told you. This is the bit. Already I have discussed. Now that this this is your one bit full header. This is your one bit you can see. Single bit. Now we can design cascading that two. We can design two bit. First first block is this. Second block is this. Only thing required will be what. That output carry will be another input over here, all right? Sum will be this particular sum will be considered as sum zero, and uh, next will be your the next bit for that sum, and this will be your output carry. Thus, you can go for higher order reversal. You need to cascade only. So, if you cascade clearly, it will be your n n bit full error, all right? And Your number of inputs are always maintained. If you see, number of inputs and outputs are always maintained. Anyway, next uh, important circuit is your reversible multiplexer because we are uh, going for one reversible arithmetic and logic unit. So, reversible multiplexer, we understand from set of inputs we need to choose one to so produce a single output. But in if we design reversible multiplexer. Lots of garbage output may be there. Meaning is, if it is a dimension of reversible multiplexer is n, n means maybe it is. If we say 32, yes. If we design a multi, uh, multiplexer like this, then we know there will be 32 inputs and output side there will be 32 outputs. Out of this, only one is used. This 31 may not be used for this particular application. So yes, it is loss of power again, but uh, in this particular situation, we can't help. It is there. This much garbage will be there. There is no insulia, but this much garbage. But we need not to worry always. Why? Because if you utilize this circuit to augment other circuits, then this unused input may be utilized. All right. So we need to look into that. So that circuit optimization case or Mm, uh, you need to require some uh, synthesizing algorithm for that. That's right. So, uh, but particularly 
if you are designing a multiplexer only, then this is a problem. You need lots of derivatives. But again, I'm telling you, if you these are good if you utilize for some other purpose or augment other circuits, then maybe they are utilized and your less number of derivatives may be there. So you need to look into that. So for this example, say this is a three into three gate suppose. I told you here the first input we are considering to be select line, control line, and once we do that, these two are of no use should become garbage. So always I told you if it is your multiplexer, if your n is to one multiplexer, number of garbage line will be always n minus one. So it is two is, uh, two is to one. Right? Uh, basically, it is number of input line actually. Right? So then what? Number of input line we are telling. So three minus one, that is two. Two like this. And this particular, it can be converted into two into uh, two cross one multiplexer like this. All right. Depending on the value of uh, zero, it will be either either choose A or B. Similarly, using these two, you can I mean, design higher order. So two. Uh, Using three plus one multiplexer can be done with four plus one multiplexer, and the common block diagram will be like this. Again, if you see here, we have two control lines, S zero and S one, and um, this is S zero copied actually. So the same line, same line means it is copied. And <coughs> here we are not writing actually. We cannot give same input. So what we need to do? What we need to do here, we need to copy this. For copying, we have to use some other structure. Let us say we are using one. It's not good, and we'll make it zero. This is zero is zero. Once we make as zero zero, here it become as zero. All right. So uh, we cannot give this as zero. As it means to same input, we cannot do it because that is uh, that will violate the rule of reversibility. If you do so, if you want this uh, input to be input in this line, then you have to use some copying kind of bit, and this is the most efficient copy bit because it is an elementary quantum bit. Other gates complexity will be higher, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, six, seven, many. So always it's better to utilize this particular bit for this. If you want to copy only one bit, so to do so, what we'll do in this input line, we we'll just make this constant, make it zero. Once you make it zero, this will be copied here. Why? Because it is a x or b kind of bit. So a x or b meaning b will be zero, so a will come up. Okay, so we will do this. So two control line as zero and s one. These are your inputs, and here it is the This is your output of the multiplexer. They are all unused for so that is. Now we we'll use this four into one multiplexer and two ladder that we have seen. If you combine this multiplexer uh, with this two ladder, now this will give you two uh, ladder. If you see at some part, and this is the very part. Okay. So. Uh, and multiplexer will choose the different operation. If you see, sometimes it is B, and that value. Sometimes it is constant zero, one, uh, maybe B inverse like that. Again, what is B inverse? We directly can't write like this way. Here, there is missing or was not shown. We have to write it like this, and this will be zero, not B inverse. And there another inverter or not zero. Not good symbol is like this in, in reverse reverse. So we have to write here one not two. Once you make this, this becomes B inverse because this is B. This is B. So you have to use this. Okay. So and you need to make this one constant in series. All right. So does this particular I mean uh, circuit if you design can perform this operation? Right. This uh, 
the scaling is also utilized as a control line. So there are various operations will be performed. What? What are these operations? It will be one addition operation. You can say, like with that uh, and with carry operation, like subtraction operation, like uh, with overflow and without overflow. This is a copy operation, copy or transfer operation. This is one increment operation, increase the value of a by one. This is a decrement operation by one, and this is another copy or transfer operation. So if we if we try to see or analyze the circuit, you can see because we understand the Boolean format, consider this multiplexer. Multiplexer basically choose all this input. One is B, zero, one, and B inverse. All this. So this is basically depicted by M. And other input will be A, right? So meaning is this value will be A and M. What is M? M may be B, may be zero, may be one, right? Or may be uh, B inverse. So if you see that, all these will basically come. A plus B if B is selected, right? And if this again, uh, if B inverse is selected, then like this. So like this way, you can. Apart from all this, arithmetic operation. See how for this particular not required. So, though we are not timing this as garbage, it may be timed as garbage in this case if you are not utilizing this. If you utilize, okay. So, this particular arithmetic circuit can perform all this eight operations. Eight operations. Two are same operation, but still because control signal is different. One zero zero zero. Okay. In this control signal, transfer operation will be there. One, one, one. In this control signal also, transfer operation will be there. So, like this. Next is mm, Oh, it's a curious. Similarly, logic circuit. Logic circuit basically the logic operation like N or XOR that is the operation. So we are using these two blocks, reversible blocks. Uh, so if you see that blocks, so this block will give suppose certain operation. So uh, the object is defined over here. Let me see. As if is defined. So as if the operation will be B C A B K, and this is like this. Let's see this. So, yeah. So B C X R A. B C X R A. So B C X R A is written. Here A is zero. Meaning B C. So B C is basically your end operation. So this is logic end operation. All right. And I think this is logic or operation. Similarly, R Z one gate. Uh, we need to see. I think table is given. Uh, table is given. So these are the operations. N or X or N M. So this will be X or and this will be N. And this is R. If you see the gate structure, uh, we are making this to constant. So ultimately, this is giving us B C. That is N operation between these two. And here again, this will be X or N N M operation. So here in the four input lines, we'll get four logic operation N or X or N M. And to select line or control line A one and A two, choose whichever will um, be there depending on the value of A one or A two. That will be. I think the rest are again not used. 
so it will be three garbage because it is four line four line is four minus one the number of garbage uh, not uh, sorry not three lines yeah, this is uh, not four lines one two three four five six this is six because these two are also input so six minus one that is five garbage five garbage is one two three four five So this is a logic circuit. This this four logic operation this uh, I mean, circuit can perform. Now, uh, actually, we can compare this because lots of references considered over here. They are in the references. If you just go and see this, if you if you go see pending, we'll see how that design variation are there. If you see some of the circuits, quantum port will be one on eight, one on eight, and some one will be very good with fourteen. Say, I mean, same application, same number of operations. All right, your ancilla count is also small, garbage uh, count is also small, and gate count is also uh, good in this case. Better, but they still be here. And again, I told you gate count is not a very prominent kind of uh, parameter. So many people have designed. Out of this, if you look, you will find this one is best out of all this. Thus, you can design your own and try to make that best possible. So now we have designed one arithmetic circuit and one logic circuit. This is your logic circuit, and this is your arithmetic circuit. Now these two be these two can be combined to design the arithmetic and logic. So this is a single bit arithmetic and logic. If you see this particular bit is your arithmetic circuit. Uh, we have uh, utilized another structure here. So because we want to add more functionality, because the earlier design actually is four uh, logic operation, one, two, three, four. But if you see the structure, it will be more one, two, three. So five, five uh, logic operation, uh, and here the same as a circuit with eight different operations. So eight arithmetic operation and five logic operation. So these two circuits are combined with the help of again multiplexer, two multiplexer, and this is your um, logic circuit. So this will give you certain output time. This is your arithmetic circuit, so this will give you certain output. So whether it will perform a logic operation or arithmetic operation, depending on this control signal, it will do that. So if S zero is suppose zero, it may be arithmetic operation, or it will be the arithmetic one. Again, whatever the arithmetic, all eight operation. Again, these are de decided by the other signals. All right, it may be your final signal will be S zero, S zero. S one. Next is your S three. S two must be there. And your S three is there. No, oh, it is here. Yeah. S two is also there, and S three. Right. No, and here S two is not required. Here S uh, S two is not required. For this again, same thing. As uh, zero again, this is decided by again S three. All are there, S three. So same signal only that S three will uh, because two circuit can work independently. S three will decide which operation, whether it is your logic or arithmetic. So this is your single bit arithmetic and logic unit. So that we can go for uh, two bit. So this block can be combined. This one block, another block. This is for one bit. So you can design another for that, and both are joined together with the help of some uh, again reversible gate, like Feynman gate or Sinod gate. If you see, this is one, and every, I mean, I mean, uh, what leg line will be joined with the help of Feynman gate, basically for copying. We are copying that. 
particular control line. And independently, this block will give you one bit. This will give you another bit. So that's two bit. So we, uh, this way you can go for n bit. So it will be like cascading the block. Single bit, two bit, three bit, four bit onwards. All right. So that you will get all the n bit is that you can logic in it. Now, uh, though we for a basic arithmetical logic, we required only other multiplexer uh, and maybe some gates required. But if you want to again empower your ALU, then maybe some other circuits like comparator, decoder, maybe division circuit, 40 point unit circuit, does maybe multiplier also, maybe. Though we can design multiplier using uh, header, but maybe dedicated multiplier, efficient multiplier you can utilize. Because multiplication requires lots of power, that's why you can keep a dedicated circuit for that. So they, they may be there, they can uh, depend on the designer. Now, say comparator and DV, I mean, the uh, code that we mentioned here, let us see. The comparator will be what? Normally, comparator, uh, compare two bits is the basic one. Compare two bits, suppose A and B, and three conditions uh, will be ideal. A greater than B, smaller than B, and equal. So, this in terms of Boolean, you can, you can say if B is low, then this condition is true. If A is low, this condition is true. And if both are high or low uh, at the same time, then this condition is true. So, for a higher order bit, also, this same formula will work. And you can design single bit comparator, various ways you can design single bit comparator. If you see this here, this is telling us A equal, um, A, and the C, A and C are input, so A equal C. Here it will tell you C is greater than A, and here it is telling C is smaller than A. And this is garbage. So in this particular structure, we are using one gate like this, this is a totally gate. The symbol of the player. This is one group. And these are inverter. So if you make this arrangement, our uh, comparator is satisfied. This is your equal uh, get item of color whatever. Another way you can if you rearrange, because if we uh, utilize lots of gates, combine them, there is a large chance that they will improve in terms of performance parameter. You consider this one, maybe it will be a little bit better. Right? So if you consider the complexity, and this uh, number of gates we are using is one, two, three, four. At quantum complexity, will be this is four, and this is five, this is nine complexity. Because the complexity of inverter, you may, you may, you may not consider. Two are prominent gates, so the fully gate and this gate. So this complexity is four, quantum complexity is four, and this is five, so it is nine. In this case, this is four, this is one, this is one, so four plus two is six. In this case, six. So this this particular comparator will be better in terms in terms of uh, quantum complexity or quantum count, whatever it is. Quantum cost also you can say. But in uh, in terms of garbage and ancilia, they are same. Here is single garbage. There is also single garbage. Two ancilia count in this case. In this case also two ancilia count. But it, it will be better because quantum complexity will be uh, less. Same way, if you consider this, here complexity will be eight. Quantum complexity I'm telling will be eight. Garbage will be one. In terms of garbage, it is improved. improved? No, it's the same. Sorry. It is the same. And in, in terms of again ancilia, it will be one. Two. Ancilia garbage same and quantum complexity is eight. So this is better than the first one, but again not better than the second one. So in the, if you see this three design. This may be better or best. So thus, uh, you can utilize other design to make a new design, so that your efficiency will increase, performance uh, efficiency. Right? So this is possible. So if you again, if we have some references given, so out of all these references, you can see that for the same circuit, single bit. This particular circuit complexity, in terms of quantum complexity, will be better. 
all low this is also good this is good but get on may be less somewhere but they are not you know, overall they are not good and uh, here if you see this quantum complexity is quite high so this is a big range of number but good in that sort of get on some other design may be better this one is this because if you know, sometimes we add the quantum complexity or quantum cost but the risk count and fl account we can add together because uh, here it is a little bit sometimes it may be confusing why because this is this is four in get count but this is three in get count which one is better how we can prove this one is better again i am telling you get count may not be that efficient but certain case let us say garbage count is suppose here uh, zero suppose then uh, whether this design is good because we have at least one garbage is there so no doubt quantum complexity is good but garbage count is here good so then situation actually another way to look into that is also proposed by some researcher what we add the performance parameter say 9 plus 0 this complexity is suppose 9 this 7 plus 1 this will be suppose 8 so this 8 is better than 9 that's why this will be good so you can i mean argue like that uh, someone is argue you can uh, justify this thing. so this is also another way to i mean look into the complexity of circuit or uh, adding the performance parameter so this is your single bit we have seen here single bit this, this is the single bit so, since this is the best this will be utilized so we can go for two bit If you see that particular block is used here, one is this, another is this, two bit. But to mitigate this, um, we require for uh, some other blocks, reversible blocks or gates. And once we do this, we'll find this will give us equal, will give us greater and smaller. Though they are also giving that greater and smaller, but at the time, these these two are giving. So this you may not consider. You can consider them to be garbage if you want, and if you want to utilize them also, you can use no problem. But uh, you can consider it to be garbage since we require only three output. This is this three output. So if you um, look into the gates, then perhaps you understand. Uh, this gate is shown earlier. I just said you can combine and you can see this. All right. And remember this particular um, this is inverter. Just to invert the bit, whatever is coming out. And this gate is you know, normally coping purpose or making uh, exit operation particular. So that's three. This this is two bit. So this two bit block can be utilized if you see. This is two bit block. If you see, this is a two bit block. All right. This can be utilized with another single bit comparator and some gates. And this becomes three bit. I'm not telling this is a very good design. This is this is not that much good design, but this is a this is a design to do so. So if you go for that, similarly you can go for n bit comparator because you need to do what in this three because this is three another another this block if you uh, append here it becomes four bit. Thus you can go for higher order. So this is your um, n bit comparator. Another important circuit is the decoder, which is reversible logic. So, you, uh, like your digital decoder, it normally expands whatever associated bits are there. Basically, n bit expands it to the power n number of bits. So, we have to do four decoders. Say, single gate some, sometimes act can act as uh, decoder. If you see here, so this is one gate already we have shown earlier. If we do what, copy the bit A over here and copy the bit over here and invert it. This gate output will be A B, A bar B, A B bar, and A bar B bar, and a person all up. So this four will be there. Means for A and B, this four output will be there. So this two to four decoder, and rest are unused. So maybe some of the cells. So another reversible block, if you see, uh, we name it as S1. So if you see that, simply you 
make them MCV or constant, constant input. All other will be, all other four output will be uh, your decoder. And there is no garbage. In this case, you will get two garbage, and here zero garbage. Right? So maybe complexity of this gate also better because here two elementary gates are there. So complexity of this gate plus this two complexity. So it will be, it will, it will be higher. This should be better. So does your this design maybe better? This is a two to decoder. So in the decoder we require this output. So this two to four is a basic decoder. So that you can go for um, some sort of performance comparison if you consider these two. You see the first design quantum process 10, the second design quantum process 6. Second design means this design. So gate count is 4 here, and fill account is 4. Here gate count is 1 only, and fill account is 2. Service count is 2 here, and service count is 0. So it is very, very good. Because you sum up, if you sum up them, 9. And so some of them 20. It is a very good design principle. All right. <coughs> but uh, one thing remember that get count normally we don't consider because the sometimes cross and C and garbage is better. So it is 10 plus 4 plus 2, that is 16. Do I can do this? It's 16. And this will be 6208. Far better. Similarly, 3 to 8 decoder can be designed. Right? So, we are using this, this structure over here. So, this particular uh, the better block we have seen using this is utilized as basic block. And then we are using some other structure, like this, this one. This one, where we, if you combine them, we will get a design like this. Right? So if you see this, what are the condition three uh, input like I0, I1, I2. For decoder output, these are the input, decoder output, our output must be what? These are our input, I0, I1, I2. Decoder must be I0, I1, it's like this. So what, let us say, First, this one. Next, Next this will be this. This will be. Thus, total eight number of output must be there like this. Total eight. Once you get, uh, once you look into this circuit, you see all these outputs are available here. Right and which are not of this form are found as garbage. Right? So, <clears throat> we can, okay, we can change the design again because uh, we want to always optimize the circuit. So, if you design again, we, Get a better one. So again, if you compare them, you see um, complexity of the second design being is this design is improved. Uh, again, this one, and in terms of uh, garbage, it will be very good one. Other parameters also this is same. Uh, these two are improved. This this is same. Again, that is a get count, so it may not be that much important. Similarly, you can go for n to do by n decoder. So just to increase the number of and make that uh, previous block as basic block, meaning it's what is the meaning? Say this is 3 to 8. So this is your basic block. You want to make one more, so you need to add here one more block. Right? So it becomes um, more block means 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 and 8, 
again eight when get to put there is becoming to be well four that uh, sorry that is um, because three to eight so that will be four to sixteen so and this is so uh, performance improvement you can see to consider this friends say it will be better friends say this will be easier friends say it will be easier the second day this is figure f okay any uh, no no sorry the uh, reference seven is basically the yeah the main problem is here figure f is basically a seven right so uh, this is about um, the decoder next um, this Uh, in the beginning, I told this may be helpful for cryptography application also. Now, we are not discussing any algorithm or something like that. How very basic, we are very simple. We want to say how this is. Uh, here, input circuit encode the information. Output circuit decode the again that input information. And input circuit is the sender, and output circuit is the receiver. Now, input circuit. There is a sender. There will be some gates, of course, and information you come to send will be uh, like this: a zero to eight or set of x tables. These are the inputs, and uh, this will be permuted or changed using a function, a reversible function, say x. And once you implement that reversible function, then you request some circuit or gate to validate, and you get some output, right? And that will be your encoded information in the form of y zero, say y one, y two, like that. Same number of bit. In output circuit, that is the receiver one, where sender of y zero y one will be the input, and it will be a new circuit or a new function, which is dy on this uh, particular input. Which these inputs are basically output of the sender. And it will help us to get back again this input picture x zero x one like that all the sets. So we require new gates. So it like this. It's very simple way what you can say. Suppose we are using we earlier we have shown you scalable gates. So if you use scalable gate one and two, it will happen. The so first scalable three input scalable one is the gate A B C. They will permute the bit P P Q R. Now this P Q R, if you uh, consider as input to this scalable gate two, they will permute it back to A B C. So that this will be your sender circuit and this will be your receiver circuit. It's a very a brief and basic one. It's not a very secure one, but that is the basic idea. You can utilize your own intuition and um, I mean your own capability to make it better. So another example may, may be like this. Say there will be a reversible gate A and B. They are acting in the sender uh, sender circuit, and in the receiver end, we are using another receiver gate circuit, which will ultimately utilize the required information. You see, it will it will have lots of information. All are not equally important. Only four bits are important, or maybe let us say two bits are important. So if four bits are important. Out of all this, some may be utilized as your um, your public key or whatever. It's some other form of um, augmented information. So at the end, once you utilize this function, it will give you back the reversible one, your required four bit or maybe two bit, whatever. All right, and this will be unused. That is unused. So such reversible circuit uh, or reversible logic will. The helpful for designing cryptographic applications. Uh, this is one. So circuit performance, if you see in this form, number of logic function is like this. Linearly, they are changing or increasing. Garbage are put is always zero because we have seen all are required always. All right, right? Not this example. For this example, but for this, if we design in a different way, then that garbage will not be there. For this design, the performance parameter has not changed. This is for this particular table is for this design. 
will be done. So no garbage. And all are female inclusion. Anyway, the challenge is what? Uh, to design a typical graphic, how to design a reversible function to send a information in encoded form? Because you can design a reversible function, but ultimately, it needs to serve your purpose. That is the challenge. How to design the receiver side reversible function because you want to decode it? That is also another challenge. No. Particularly for big amount of information, it is a very tough job. Required some other mathematical thing like algorithm to do so. So we require some optimization algorithm. So we require some investigation here. So well, what is there in the future? So maybe we require better circuits or gates. So we want to reduce always because we we, we want to go for quantum computation. So the reduction of quantum cost must be there. And then, yeah, we use some synthesis, better synthesis, so maybe our circuit will be optimized. Our circuit will be good. So reversible logic is drawing attention to serve basically the quantum. So quantum computing is reversible that already we know this. So can be simulated the classical circuits alongside the quantum. So well, may not be reversible, we don't know. Quantum computing is. So, if you are interested, you can explore. So, thank you. And to stop here. Okay. So, may I now request uh, the participants to raise uh, queries? So participants can uh, post their queries in the chat box also if they have some problem in the audio system. I think they are interested in quantum. Maybe other classes they will ask the question. Okay, maybe. So if uh, there is no further query, then uh, we are going to uh, say stop this session three. So we thank uh, today's resource person, Dr. Gunajit Kolita for such a nice talk. And we have a few more sessions with him uh, in, in future also, uh, maybe on 27th. And so uh, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you, Manasar, and thank you, participants.